It's time to expose Australia's $48 billion international education export lie. International education is touted as a $48 billion export industry. According to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, international education is Australia's fourth biggest export. This $48 billion export figure is regularly touted by industry lobbyists in support of increasing student numbers. However, the notion that international education is a gigantic export industry is pure statistical fraud perpetrated by the Australian Bureau of Statistics and repeated ad nauseum by industry lobbyists. The ABS calculates this fantastical export figure by, quote, an average spend estimate from Tourism Research Australia supplemented by the addition of total expenditure on course fees. The ABS incorrectly classifies all spending by anyone on a student visa as an export, even when the expenditures are paid for with money earned in Australia. Student visa holders are the only category of migrants whose expenditure is treated as an export for the duration of their visa. So for example, if an international student Uber driver on their fifth year of their visa fills up with petrol, it is counted as an export. Whereas if a newly arrived temporary migrant on a skilled visa fills up with petrol, it's not counted as an export. But if you follow the money, the $48 billion export figure just doesn't add up. World Bank compiles data on migrant remittances sent to and from countries. In 2023, migrant remittance inflows into Australia were only valued at $1.6 billion US and were tracking well below the peak of $2.45 billion US in 2011. By contrast, remittance outflows from Australia were valued at $10.3 billion in 2023 given a record net outflow of US $8.6 billion from Australia. As the chart on the left shows, the number of student visa holders in Australia has roughly doubled over the past 12 years from just over 300,000 in 2012 to nearly 610,000 in 2024. Here's a question for you. If international education was a true export, remittances should have flowed into Australia, one would have thought. However, remittances have flown outward in proportion to the growth in international students, as the chart on the right shows. As international student numbers rose, so too did the net outflow of money from Australia in remittances. As the saying goes, always follow the money. The ABS's fantastical $48 billion education export figure is clearly a giant statistical fraud. Otherwise, why did Australia send a net $8.6 billion US out of Australia to other countries in 2023? Surely if the ABS's education export figure was accurate, Australia would have seen a strong net inflow in migrant remittances, not a giant outflow. The inconvenient truth is that the overwhelming majority of expenditure in Australia by student visa holders is funded by them working in Australia. And based on the data presented above, international education is far more likely to be an import since the amount of money sent to home countries by migrants has risen in proportion with the rise in international students. But wait, it gets even worse for the international education industry. An article published today in The Guardian showed that international students who cannot speak basic English are walking away from Australian universities with prestigious degrees. More than a dozen academics and students who spoke to The Guardian, most on the condition of anonymity, said that universities' financial reliance on foreign students over many years had hollowed out academic integrity and threatened the international credibility of the sector. One tutor told The Guardian that, quote, most can't speak English right or understand basic English. It's mind-blowing that you can walk away with a master's degree in a variety of subjects without being able to understand a sentence. Let's get real for a moment. If generous work rights and permanent residency weren't on offer, few students would bother to study in Australia. The entire international education industry is built on a foundation of lies and is designed to enrich senior executives in the industry, while domestic students and the broader community bear the cost. Is there any wonder that Labor's migration review showed that more than half, i.e. 51%, of international student graduates with bachelor's degrees were working in low-skilled jobs in the three years after graduation, as shown in the figure on the left? Or why the Graduate Outcomes Survey consistently shows that international graduate employment rates, participation rates, and median salaries are well below those of domestic graduates, as the figure shows on the right. The reality is that Australia's international education system directly contradicts government policy. The Albanese government's latest Universities Accord final report stated the following, and I quote, Australia should aspire to be a world leader in delivering innovative, best practice learning and teaching, not only maintaining but improving higher education, student experience and outcomes as the system grows. This means pursuing excellence in learning and teaching at a system-wide level and moving beyond the current threshold standard approach to quality. Graduate employment outcomes are substantially lower for international students than their domestic counterparts. 
This poses a risk to Australia's standing as a provider of high quality international education. It is vital to improve learning outcomes and student experiences for all students encompassing international students in addition to domestic students. Clearly, if we're handing out degrees to people who can't even speak English and haven't done the coursework, then we are degrading Australia's university system. If the federal government was fair dinkum about reforming the international education system, it would do six things. First of all, it would raise financial barriers to entry. That is, how much funds a student must have available before arriving in Australia. Secondly, it would significantly increase entrance requirements, e.g. English language proficiency and academic testing. Third, it would raise teaching standards. Fourth, would abolish group assignments so that domestic students no longer have to carry through overseas students. Fifth, the government would cut the clear link between studying, working and permanent residency so that we got genuine students, not people seeking to migrate to Australia. Sixth, the government would require universities to provide on-campus accommodation to international students in direct proportion to their enrolment. The bottom line is that Australia must aim for a smaller cohort of high quality students. The focus must be on quality over quantity. If we did that, then international education may very well become a genuine export industry and add value to Australia. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Look, I've been covering this whole uh, international education export lie for about eight years. I've been calling it out for about eight years. I've been laughed at, I've been told I'm wrong, etc., etc. But really, the evidence is clear. This notion that international education is a giant export industry for Australia has been completely de debunked. Otherwise, why would we be seeing about eight and a half billion dollars US flow out of Australia annually? Surely if international education was a giant export industry, we'd be seeing money come into Australia, not out. Anyway, sound off in the comments. I'll be very interested to hear your views. Thanks for watching.